Rising up in the sky, telling me. 
we will stand and take up the offering this morning. Do pray for the service. Pray the Lord that's had his way here this morning. Do pray for Brother Turk. Do pray for Aaron this morning. Uh, and most of all, pray for the Lord. Perhaps you care to pray for us again. Dear God in heaven, it's you, Lord. Come to you, Lord. Lord God, just thank you for your blessings and every day, Lord, to give to us. Lord God, we just thank you for another day, Lord. And we to the church, Lord, uh, a place for us to worship you, Lord. And we thank you for all this. We just have to do the service this morning, Lord. Just have your way in, Lord. meeting July 25th special offer for the building fund. Anything else? There's nothing else. We'll get into the prayer requests. Uh, Sue Welsh, Johnny Triplett, Billy Joe McFadden, Patricia Allen, uh, Clifton and Adam, Dan Stout, Louise Markham, John Murray Bishop, Kim Bernard, Reason Family, Website Request, Kathleen, David Wilson, Carter Harris, Kennedy Greer, Ashley Wine, Unspoken, Chandler Sutherland, Kristen Maines, Henry Cross, uh, Danny McAlay, Sam Click, Kendra Colby, Kenny Head, Christian Family, Garrett Family, uh, Farmer Family, 
uh, Margaret and Walter Adams, Jacob Dalt, Andy Lowe, David Burnett, Tyler Moorefield, Lou Paul, Sonny Jennings, Eddie's family, Kevin East Christian Home, Paul Stow, Paul Twins, Dennis and Hazel, New Building, Dane Buchanan, Chuck Mays, Murray Stanley, Lucas Perdue, our church, Brian Sigmund, Cynthia Phillips, Stacey Dow, Charles and Teresa, Shirley, Chris Wallace, Michelle, Rose, Donna Riddle, uh, Warfield family, Santa Humphrey and wife, Nancy Gwynn, Asa Main, Curry's family, David Ward, Curry Melissa, Aiden family, Stacy Peake, Mike Carroll, Minnie Moorefield, Avery E, Elaine Kirby, Aaron Steele, we pray for Aaron, uh, Stella Payne, in the church, Connor Eisenhower, Mitchell Reese, Melissa's family, and Hancock, James Thompson, Maria Jennings, Rick Stout, Gerald Cooper, Stel McKinney, Law Enforcement, Ron Garrett, Mike Joyce, Christine Davis, Joyce and Haley, and the Chuck Moorefield family. Anybody else? Is that it? Good? Is that good? All right. Any birthdays come up this week? Yeah. <laughs> Any anniversaries? Nothing? All right. Good morning. Good morning. We'll step out now and have our fellowship this morning. Shake everybody's hand. Tell you glad to see you. Whether you mean it or not, man. <laughs>
Uh, so they're going to watch it today. They put him on another medication to help with the protein. If that doesn't work, levels don't change or they go up, then they're going to start exploring other things because there's some underlying condition that is probably just brought out. But God knows all about it. And God's in control. So you just may pray for him. Physically and spiritually, you pray for him. That God just get a hold of him and uh, he'll listen to the Lord. And you just be much in prayer for all the others on the prayer list. And all that uh, are there, God knows all their needs. Uh, I know each of you, and God looks after us each and every day, each and every one of us in so many different ways, in so many ways, and we just thank God for it. St. John chapter number 1, we're going to begin to read at verse number 29. The Bible says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Uh, this is he whom I said, uh, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. I, therefore am I come and baptizing with water. I, and I, John, bear record, saying, I, I saw a spirit descending from heaven like a dove, I, and it abode upon him. I, and, he, and I knew him not, to, but he that sent me to baptize with water. I, and said, the, the, the same said unto me, I, unto whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw, and by record, that this is the Son of God. And again the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And, two, and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And then Jesus turned and saw them following, and said unto them, What seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? And he saith unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with, that day, with him that day. For it was about the tenth hour. And one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And Jesus findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, Have we found the Messiah, which is, being interpreted, the Christ? And he brought him to Jesus, and when, he, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, thou, thou son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The following day, the, following, the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, then finding Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Let's pray. Let me follow me coming today, Lord, somewhere still before thee. Thank you for another day and another opportunity, God, just to come to you today, Lord, to understand to you, to read and preach and teach thy word. And I pray now, dear Heavenly Father, I don't know what needs to be said or done, but I know you do, and I know you have all the words. And I pray, God, if there's one here today that does not know the free part of sin, I pray today, dear Lord, that this turn loose of whatever's been keeping them back, whatever's been holding them back, Lord, I pray, God, that this turn loose of it come and follow you. Lord, may somebody here today needs to make a decision, God, uh, whatever it is, to follow you, to, uh, to serve you. Lord, I pray today, dear God, they'll get out of the way just that you have a way in their life. God, just turn it all over to you. Lord, I thank you for all you do. We pray for our family, God, and our children, Lord. You know what's going on there. Lord, they pray for our, our son and grand grandsons. And Lord, I just pray, God, you'll keep all of them safe and all those on the prayer list, Lord. I, every name and every burden, Lord, is just as important as another. And I pray, God, you'll bless them. Lead God and direct me to be all the glory. Not all will be up at In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, I know today we've, uh, we're sitting here, and I was thinking, you know, this week, uh, uh, this old devil, he tries to battle a lot. And, uh, he, he does a pretty good job at it, amen. Uh, he's pretty good at what he does. But I was thinking uh, here about following the Lord. And here's what uh, uh, brought back to my mind. I remember back when I was a kid. You remember a time when you was able to get out and run and play, amen. Do uh, you remember a time when you was able to get out and run around and just do the things uh, uh, that 
that, that these children do. I've seen of them out there. And, man, they'll get out there and they'll run and they'll play and they'll go through them things. They'll go through them tunnels. They'll go down the slides. They'll get on the swings. and They'll do all that stuff. And there used to be a little game, you know, where we used to play. And as I see them play, they'll play uh, follow the leader. You remember that little game you used to play? And if you wanted, just take off. And uh, you had to follow them wherever they went. And, do whatever they did. And you know, a lot of times we did that without even, I mean, without any hesitation. Amen. I, we just went out and we began to follow. We do whatever they did, whatever we could do, they did. And we just go right on. I got to thinking about that a lot of times uh, uh, in our life. What we, we do that before we even realize that we're doing it. Amen. I, uh, we did that as a child. This is a game running around. But in life, a lot of times, we'll do the same thing. I, we might be running around with the wrong crowd. We might be running the wrong round uh, uh, in life and we'll get hooked up with the wrong bunch and before we know it, we're right in the middle of the same things that they're doing. Uh, uh, we still uh, want to be a part of things and uh, sometimes we'll compromise our faith or compromise our morals uh, just to be able to go along with what everybody else is doing. Uh, and then the next thing you know, you've compromised so far you don't even realize you've compromised no more. Amen. Uh, well, listen, I want to tell you today, Jesus don't want us to compromise anything. Amen. Uh, he's not asking us to compromise one single thing. Uh, I'm here to tell you today, uh, you better start paying attention in your life of who you're following. Amen. Uh, I know there's some things in your life that you think are important. Amen. Uh, I know there's some things in your people in your life that you think they're important. Uh, but there better never be a time, a place, a thing uh, that takes more importance in your life uh, than Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, there better never be anything more important to you because that's the only thing that's going to get you out of this place. Uh, that's the only thing, the only help and hope that you have uh, while we're still here in this world. Amen. Uh, I'm glad to know today that no matter how much the old devil likes to attack, uh, no matter how much he wants to throw in the road or throw in the way or throw it to, uh, no matter how much he wants to bind you down or tie you down, uh, we still serve a God that is able. Amen. Uh, we still, you know, I was thinking on the way to church this morning, uh, I know how bad the devil is. Uh, I know how much he can throw our way. I know how much he, we've uh, aggra been aggravated this week. Uh, I was thinking this week, and you can you imagine uh, with all the trouble and the heartache that you have, uh, all the things that you've got going on in your life, all the bad stuff that's happening, uh, can you imagine what would happen uh, if the Lord had not resisted the devil any and all in your life? Amen. Uh, I'm telling you what, uh, God said he wouldn't let us endure uh, uh, go through anything that we couldn't endure nor that he would give us the strength to get through. Uh, hey, I'll tell you what, I can't face the devil on my own. Uh, I can't face that sorry rascal by myself. Uh, but I'm glad that greater is he that is in me uh, than he that's in the world. Uh, what a God we serve. Uh, hey, I'm telling you what, uh, there's some things we need to realize. Uh, we need to figure out today. Uh, hey, uh, who, who, do we, uh, who are we following? Uh, uh, who do we trust in? Amen. Uh, who we got our trust in. Uh, there ain't nothing in this world. Uh, uh, nobody in this world. Uh, we're trusting more than Jesus. Amen. Uh, I'm telling you what. Uh, I'm talking about putting our undying trust in somebody. Amen. I'm talking about putting our trust in somebody. I'm thinking, you know, I'm not an animal person by no means whatsoever. We got an old cat there at the house. It's been there for a long time. I don't even know how long that stupid cat's been there. Every day, I mean, you can't open that stupid door up without that cat calling for food. I mean, they be food in the in, in, in the food in the bowl, and it's sitting there whining, mound like it wants something else to eat. Hey, man, look, I hate. I don't care nothing for that cat. Just to be honest with you. Hey, that cat's got a purpose, though. I mean, it's got a purpose. I don't care nothing for that stupid cat. But you know what I did this last night, this morning? I fed that cat. You know why? Because Melissa wasn't there. That's why I fed that cat. Hey, man, but here's what I was thinking. We was gone for, we'd be gone for a few days and go away and come back. We'll get back to the house, and you don't want to be sitting at that door meowing. That cat, trust, 
Amen. It trusts that somebody's going to feed it. Amen. It trusts it when it's coming back. Hey, I ask you today, do you have that kind of trust in the Lord? Amen. We put our trust in Him on a daily basis. Look, we go out and we try to sin for ourselves. We go out and we try to do things and make things happen on our own. Here's what I tell you. We need to put as much faith in the Lord as an animal does its master. Amen. I'm not saying for you to lay around, lay on these lazy hind end and just expect the Lord to do everything. But I am telling you this. Get up. Get out. Get busy. And trust God's going to provide. No matter what. Amen. Amen. No matter what. Put our trust in the Lord. Don't put it in the material things of man. Don't put it in the things that we do on our own. Don't put it in what I can do. Amen. Put it in what God can do. God's the one that is able. He's the one that's able to put it. If you put your trust in Him and follow Him, this is what the Bible said. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 5 says this, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. He goes on in verse number 6, and He said this, In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. You know what that tells us? Hey, if we will expect, we want God to put us in the right place. We want God to, God's will in our life. Hey, we want to be where God would have us to be, then you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to trust Him that He knows what's best for you. Amen. You have to trust Him He knows what's best for you. All of, now, I'm going to just about guarantee all of us in here over the age of four, maybe even four years old and up, got a cell phone. Who ain't got a cell phone? Good. Exactly. Amen. Get one next week. Get one next week. See there? Here's what I say about that. I won't preach on cell phones just because I'm just talking about that and what the Lord gave me. Here's what I'll give what what they give me. I'll guarantee you that everyone in here at 16 years old and older didn't go to this driving and took that cell phone out and they got out there on Google Maps or, or some other GPS application that, and they typed in where they wanted to go. And they put that thing up there on the dash and they started following every direction that it's in. Trusting that it would get you to where it said you would go. Amen? Now some of us have been using GPS longer than others. And I'll promise you, if you've been using GPS for any length of time, it has lied to you. It has lied to you worse than anybody in the world has ever lied to you. It's taking you to places. Hey, listen, it's taking you to places that don't even exist. It's taking you to places that ain't even close to where you were going. Amen. I'm talking sometimes maybe not even in the same state. I'm talking sometimes in the, in the middle of a field and never in existence. You know what that's like? That's like trusting in you to get you to heaven. Amen? That's like trusting in you or somebody else or what mama said or what daddy said that with the most important thing that you had. Hey, the Bible said to trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy, under thy own understanding. He said in all thy ways acknowledge Him and He will direct thy paths. You know what? That tells me, that tells me, hey, if we'll turn to God and trust in the Lord, He'll be the one who gets us in the right place. His directions have never failed. I'll promise you this much I've Amen. never been in the wrong place with God. Never been, I've never been laid down the wrong road. Never been the wrong way. We left. We left here for Thursday night, Thursday afternoon, to go ride side by side back in the mountains. We was gone Friday. We got up. And we started riding, and we rode some pretty, pretty rough places. I mean, it's pretty bad. It was wet, and I mean, it's raining. It's kind of raining off and on all day. That's miserable enough for one thing. But we've been riding. We crossed a, a creek or two that. We shouldn't have never crossed to start with. We got up back there and we got... Now, I'm going to tell you the names of these places. 
And you tell me if a man should even be in there to start with. Amen. First place we went to was called the Dragon's Back. Y'all know what the Dragon's Back is? Y'all know what the Dragon's Back is? I didn't have it rock. I'm just going to tell you. And, the, and getting there was as bad as the, as the place. And we went to a place called, after that, and went all up the mountain to a place called Sand Mine. And we left out of that place. We went down, and, uh, we went down a hill, down a rock, down, down a mountain, we called the, the Widowmaker. And then we left out of there, and we went down, and we're going, going on down the mountain. And we go to a place that's called Pea Gravel Hill. You know what Pea Gravel is? Well, whoever named this trail had no idea what Pea Gravel was. <laughs> it should have been Boulder City. Amen. Which we'd been there, we'd been there years ago before. But listen, I'm talking. I'm talking about. I mean, we're in. We're. I mean, rocks as big as I am, bigger than these. I mean, it's big. And I mean, it's wet, it's slick, it's rain. We've been in all these places all day. We get down to the bottom of it on the other side. This is hours upon hours later. It's probably six, five, six hours later. We get down to the mountain the other side instead of a creek. What is typically a creek is now a river as wide as this church. And just a few feet out is this deep. So there's no going across the river. I mean, it's a mess to get down there anyway. And there is no way in the world we think we're ever going to get back. And we just ain't we ain't got no choice. We're just going to have to go back up. But we just come down. I've got people mad. We've got people fussing. And, and I tell you what. And, we start back up through there, and I told her, I, I, I just been, I've been praying. Lord, let's say, what are we going to do? I said, I've been praying. We just start back up through there, and there's a little old, I told Melissa, we got almost just a little ways back up the river there. I see a little trail on the map, it didn't go anywhere. But I know there was a road, I could tell on the right, uh, there was a road somewhere over there. I told Melissa, so we're just going to walk out here and see what it is. Walk over there and there was the interstate. Now look, I don't know if y'all know this or not, you ain't supposed to have a side side of this. <laughs> there was a woman beside me or in another machine with us. And she said, well, said, that ain't going to work. said, what are we going to do, preacher? She said, you need to say a little prayer. I said, I done been praying. And the Lord put a four-lane highway. <laughs> Amen, in the middle of the mountains. <laughs> and a place where I shouldn't be. I said, she said, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know what you're going to do. But when the Lord provides a way, amen, you just take off down a four-lane highway, amen. I'm here to tell you today, I don't care what it is in the middle of the mess you're in, you just continue to pray. I know a lot of times we put ourselves in our own mess. You may be here today and create the mess that you're in. You may be in a bad place because of your circumstances. You may be in a bad place because of your actions. I'm here to tell you today, that's a God that hears. That's a God that cares. I'm telling you, quit leaning on your way. Quit trusting yours. Quit following the word. Quit following the crowd. And start following God. Amen. Amen. Start following the Lord. What a God it is we serve. What a God it is that we have. Amen. I depend on Him, don't you? I heard a story some time ago. About two, two preachers, they was talking about the Lord. They was in a public place. They was talking about, about the Lord there. I think he's getting in the elevator. He's got in the elevator. This guy got on. He kind of interrupted their conversation. and said, listen, I, I just wish I'll keep it down. He said, I don't believe in this God that you're talking about. So you know two preachers. If there's really preachers being preachers, they had to engage the guy. Just ask him, so why in the world? Don't you believe in the Lord? He said, well, let me just tell you something. Several years ago, I was out in the middle of the desert. Stuck, had nobody around, nothing to help. He said, I prayed, and the Lord didn't do anything. Preacher said, well, you're here today. So what happened? He said, some crazy Indian come by and got me out. Preacher said, well... I guess you just don't look at things the same way we look at things. Let me tell you something. 
God may not always send the help in the form and way you wanted. Uh, God didn't send us a, a, a send you the thing that you wanted the way you wanted. Uh, but if you ask God, uh, God will do something for you uh, that nobody else can do. Uh, hey, sometimes the Bible says uh, that we entertain angels unaware. Uh, sometimes we reject uh, hey the warnings. Uh, we reject the hand uh, that God has sent for us uh, just because it ain't the one we wanted. Uh, I'm here to tell you today. Uh, it may not be the one you want. It may not let you live any way you want to live. It may not let you do whatever you want to do. But it will sure provide you a way to get out of a mess and to stay out of it and not have to go back. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, the little woman out the well said, give me this drink that I come not hither to draw again anymore. You know what? You won't have to go back to the mess you're in. We're sitting down there and we're going to cross that way to get ready to go out there and they was debating. They was, there's a bunch of them behind us debating. Should we get on that road? Should we get on that interstate? Should, what, if, what if we get a ticket? I was the least of my concern. Amen? That was the least of my concern. You want to know what my concern was? I'll tell you what my concern was. My concern was the passenger that I had in the right hand side of me. My wife. Now, if it just been me and probably some of them men or me and Jason years and few years ago, we probably went back up the mountain. But I had a passenger that had no business. She wanted enough. She didn't. She didn't much care about coming down. She done got out on the dragon's back once. <laughs> said I ain't. This. She said this is great. <laughs> She down there, I got her. She stayed in the rest of the way. Got down there, there wasn't no way she'd go back across that map. You had a passenger to think about. Let me tell you something here today, folks. That I, as we went, as we did, in between our uh, Sunday school and our, and our preaching service, I got a little fella had me out there pushing him on the swing, and I was looking around there. And I mean, there was people standing, there was kids standing in line. Waiting this to get a turn to get on something. Amen. I, they was young and running all over the place out there. And I tell you what the Lord showed me, listen, this place is full up. And I want you to know something. You've got young, you've got spouses, you've got neighbors. Hey, they're dependent on the route that you take. They're dependent on the route that you go. Hey, when God provides a way, I say, don't go back to the hell over the world. Don't go back to the swamp. Go down the road. How did God pay? Amen. Amen. Go down the road that God paid. Don't debate about it. Don't wonder about it. Somebody you can rely on. I'll tell you something I thought about this week. I heard another story about a, a couple that had an elderly couple that passed away. They were, all the signs pointed that they passed away due to mal uh, malnutrition. In other words, they hadn't been eaten. And I was thinking, you know, in a world, in the world, the world we live in, there is no reason for anybody to go without food. I mean, all the opportunities they are out there, people, I mean, there is missions all over the country. There's works all over the country that have that food all the time. Here's what I was thinking, though. Here's what happened to the rest of the story, as old Paul Harvey would say, and went on. 99% sure they passed away due to, due to malnutrition. And as they were going through some of the things, they found this sack in, 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 the, in, in one of the closets, and they began to go through the things, and they found that sack, and inside that sack was $40,000. $40,000 and they died because of malnutrition. Do you know what? We're fixing to hit, put the rubber to the road right here. There are people sitting in this church today that have a way to heaven, but yet they'll die and go to hell. Same difference. Malnutrition. It's been provided it's been here. It's been laid out. Now, if you want a way out of your mess, uh, you want a way to go to heaven, uh, you want a way to keep out of that mess,
emails, then I tell you to trust in the Lord with all our mind, with all our heart, with all our soul. Listen, you can continue down the same road you're on. You can continue doing the same things that you've been doing. But I can tell you one thing for certain. You'll never get out of that mess until you do something different. And trust in God. God's here today. He's provided a way. Let me just tell you what God's, how, what God's done for you today. I don't know your story. I know my story. I know all the things that we've had to face this week. Good, bad, ugly, all of them. Yesterday, about 3, 30, 4 o'clock, I just finally told the devil, I said, look, I'm done. It ain't my battle no more. It's yours. It, it's, it belongs to God. Let me tell you what God's done for you today. He got you up out of bed. Some of you have been fighting messes we don't even know about. Some of you are fighting messes that nobody else even knows about. Struck, it's all different. There's addictions. There's, I mean, there's, there's financial troubles. There's marital troubles. There's, there's all kinds of things. Health issues. I mean, there's stress. There's depression. I mean, there, there's hundreds of things that you could be going through every day. But let me just tell you what God did for you today. He woke you up. He put enough gas in the vehicle that you got here in. He made sure that it would start. He made sure that you had a way to get to heaven and light back to church today. He made sure that you got a chance to hear how good He is. You know what else He did? He made sure. You have an opportunity to get it fixed. As every head's bowed and every eye closed and every Christian praying, every heart searching. God has took every step that He possibly can take to help you to get out of the mess that you're in. He's took every for every step to help you come and live for Him. He's took every step. Now, what you know what you've got to do? You've got to take a step. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, Christian friend, hearts are searching. This altar is open for anyone for any reason. I'm not here today to drag you out or pull you out. If you're here today and you've got something you need to give to God, give it to God. Don't let the devil hold you back. Don't do the same thing you've been doing. Don't keep going down the same road. I say go to God. Trust the Lord. He'll make a difference in your life. He'll make that difference. Nobody but God can do it. There's somebody else today. There's somebody here today that needs you, that needs to touch Him. Needs somebody to just reach out. This needs to reach out and touch the hem of his garment. Now, I'm here to tell you today, there's a God that's working. Now, there's a God that's moving. Now, as real as the devil is, uh, bigger is he, uh, greater is he. Uh, it's a God that we serve. Maybe you're here today, maybe you've got a burden on your heart. Maybe you've got something happening in your life. Maybe you've got somebody you know that needs Jesus or needs some help. Why don't you get out of that seat and come down this altar and pray for them? Why don't you come down here and make a real difference? Make a real change. What a God it is that we serve. What a God that we have that is able. Woo! What a God that can do anything. I ask you today. You pray for those that's on this altar today. You pray for those that's all over this place. I'm telling you, God's here today. He showed up just for you. Would you come? Would you come? We're getting ready to go to the Lord and pray. Anybody else need to come for any reason, for any reason at all? Jesse, you pray for us. Father, I come to you today, Lord. I thank you, God, for I thank you, Lord, for the love of the Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the love God, I thank you, Lord, God, I thank you, Lord, God, for everything you've done for us, God, for forgiving us. I pray you, Lord, for the 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 L
Lord will give you back for us that are willing to need to be with you. Save souls. Save souls. I pray to God that fulfill their needs, Lord. I pray for each and every one. Yes. So I pray for this, this morning, God. I pray to God that you just be with it, Lord. Be with them, God. Whatever their need may be, just yes. touch them, Lord God. Heal them, get them back up about their feet like they once was. And I pray, God, that you just hit the skirt up the front of the cross. everything that's going on, God, touch it, Lord God. Have your will, Lord God, where you see fit. Yeah. I thank for everything you've done, God, all you're going to do in your holy, sweet, and precious name. Amen. 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 Holy Wayman. Amen. We sure do appreciate you this morning. Appreciate what God's done here today. Maybe somebody here this morning has got a word or a testimony on your heart. Something you'd like to say or do. Hearts and minds clear. Hearts and minds clear. Lord, do something for you this morning. You want to talk about it? Brag on Jesus. Amen. This time we'll ask a couple of ushers if they would to come up. We'll receive an offering for our youth fund. Come on, Pete. Come on. All right, Buck, you ask a blessing on this offer. God, we ask the Lord to take us off. Lord, this way, you son, God, we thank you, God, for each one. Give us the ability of God, but it's the highest and it's a man, God, the blessing of this is going to be done. God, we thank you for your prayer for it all. We pray for you, my prayer, amen. Amen. Everything you give today, just go to our youth offering. Everything you do today. We appreciate you. Be much in prayer for services tonight. If anything changes, I'll let you know. Shake somebody's hands. Tell me love and God bless you.